Praise the Lord. I would like to welcome each and every one of you in today's virtual worship service. Hope everyone is doing well by the grace of God. Today I would like to speak from the topic called Tongue Brings Blessings and Curse. Tongue Brings Blessings and Curse, which is taken from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 15 verse 8. These people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Let me read out it again. These people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. So this is the word of God. How do we honor God? How do we honor God? Do we honor God from our lips? Or do we honor God from our heart? What do we do? Are we worshiping Him in vain? Is our worship in vain? Are we bringing our own ideas? Are we bringing our own ideology, ideologies to worship Him, to know Christ? Let us look to the Gospel of Matthew from chapter 15 from verse 1 to verse 9. Chapter 15 from verse 1 to verse 9. What does it written here? Let me read out for all of us. Then Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do you, your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash, wash their hands before they eat. He answered them, And why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever speaks evil of father or mother must surely die. But you say that whoever tells father or mother whatever support you might have had from me is given to God, then that person need not honor the father. So for the sake of your tradition, you make void the word of God. You hypocrites! Isaiah prophesied rightly about you when he said, These people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. This is the word of God. So how do we live our life? How are we living our life as a true believer of Christ? Are we worshiping him with our lips? Or are we worshiping Him with our hearts? Today, we see many Christians. Today's church, today's church is completely defined. People go to worship. People go to worship. They worship with their lips instead of worshiping God with their hearts. Because they are just a Sunday worshiper. They are just a Sunday worshiper. They go to church. They worship. They worship just for the sake of worship. They show themselves so holy inside the church, but only on Sundays and other days, they are different people. Are we worshiping Him from our lips or from our heart? What is defiling us? What is defiling us? Let us look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 18 to 20. Before that, let us look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 11. 15, verse 11. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Remember, it is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Let us not take this verse, let us not inter- interpret this verse in the wrong way. I have seen a people, I have seen a person, I have encountered a person face to face. I saw a person who was smoke, smoking. And when, when I, suddenly when I saw him, he was surprised. And he said that, 
he has interpreted this verse that he said that whatever we take inside our mouth is not a sin but whatever we that comes out from our mouth that is a sin that is what he interpreted and that is completely long this verse doesn't mean that let us look at further what does this verse means and why Jesus told Jesus has spoken this verse for all of us when you look at Matthew chapter 15 verse 18 to 20 but what comes out from the mouth proceeds from the heart and this is what defiles for out of the heart come evil intentions murder adultery fornication thief false witness slander these are what defile a person but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile here what jesus is trying to tell us is that through this verse it is not about uh, he is not telling us about uh, eating or something but it is what it tells us that he is telling us about um, whatever that whatever comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart it is he means to that whatever we think whatever we keep it in our heart whether it is wrong or bad if it is good thing that comes out or bad thing it comes out when we speak it is about speaking whatever that comes out from our mouth it comes out from whatever we have in our heart so if we have anything wrong bad thing in our heart that itself it comes out from our mouth if we have anything good things that that itself whatever we speak it comes out from our heart that is what god is trying to tell us and in fact if it is about eating see when we look at in 17 do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the smoke and goes out into the sewer if it is about eating of course whatever we eat that comes out from our sewer but let us let us uh, add a verse let us add a verse into this we cannot just take this verse and explain everything but let us look at an, another verse in colossians chapter 3 verse 17 when we look at colossians chapter 3 verse 17 it says glorify me in whatever you do that is what god god is telling us in whatever you do do it in such a way that it can glorify him we cannot think wrong we cannot eat wrong thing we cannot take wrong thing we cannot smoke we cannot drink we cannot uh, we cannot take unnecessary thing which is bad for our health and we can glorify god we cannot pray and smoke we cannot pray and drink that is not possible So that, that person whom I encounter, he was telling, he was interpreting this verse, verse in such a way. So that is a wrong interpretation. We cannot interpret the, this verse in that way. Regarding eating, means we cannot uh, eat or anything we cannot eat with which we can't glorify God. We cannot pray. If anything we cannot pray and eat, then that is not, not, uh, and that is not, we can't follow this verse. Only the thing which we can pray in it, that throw that only we can glorify God. So what does it say? The verse says, But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. This is what, de what defiles. Let us look at that. For out of the heart come evil intentions. Today, when we look at today in the church, how are we living? Forget about, let us speak today about the uh, Christian's way of living. Because uh, we at home, if we are not good, how can we preach the gospel? How can we show the good example to others, the other faith believers? That is not possible. So let, let us look at the evil intentions that we have. Christians, how do we live? Though we go to church every day, though we worship every day, we think that we are Christian believers, true Christian believers. 
but we even have in our heart evil intentions for others. To our neighbors, we do not love them. Sometimes we fight with them. We, uh, we, we are against our own brothers and sisters. When we uh, look at the Bible, we are all brothers and sisters. We are all sons and daughters of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we are all related in blood. But when we come as a Christian believers, we don't take that in that way. Of course, we love them. In the church, we are so good to everyone. But when we are out of the uh, church, we have evil intentions. We, we think that he is bad. We think that she is bad. She is doing bad. She is that and that. We have so many uh, wrong things in our mind. What another thing what it says murder murder does it as I as I already shared this before murder doesn't only means to kill someone with the guns or with knives or something that is not only a murder but it is our mouth it is our tongue through which we uh, hurt people we hurt it begin from our family at home we hurt our parents we hurt our siblings we all hurt our Brothers and sisters, we heard, uh, we heard our, our neighbors, we heard uh, whomever we meet, we are angry with them, with our harsh words, and w- when we hurt them, we kill them already. That is also a murder. That is what we, we as a Christians, we are not showing a good example to others. Adultery. Adultery. This is for our uh, married people we are not faithful to our wives we are not faithful to our husbands that is what Pharisees were doing at uh, those days that is why Jesus told them that you all you all are hypocrites you are living your life in such a way and you are coming us and you are teaching us that you you don't wash your hands and eat. That is not important. That is what Jesus said. But how you are living? What is your lifestyle? We, though we are Christian, we are not faithful to our wives. We are not faithful to our spouse. We are not faithful to our husbands. Another one is fornication. This is especially to the youths. Premarital sex, premarital uh, relationships. We are true believer of Christ. Today, when we see, this is a fact we cannot hide. Many, even in the church, wherever it may be, many youths they have boyfriends and girlfriends. I, w- I would say that it is good if we if we don't have at all a boyfriend and girlfriend before we get married that is what i i feel but even if if, if we have let that let let it make it uh, pure uh, what i mean to say let it make it a clean relationship let it let it make a make, make it a true christian relationship let it make it a, make it a Holy, uh, holy spiritual, spiritual, holy spiritual uh, relationship. Before we get married, even though we love one another, let it make keep it holy, keep it holy till we get married, so that it will be acceptable in the eyes of God. Another one is theft. Today in the church, we used to uh, come to listen, uh, hear many. Uh, frauds in the church itself we being a christian believer of christ we being a true christian servant we are into many unwanted things even in the church we we do things which is not acceptable in the eyes of god for this i will i will speak one day when i I, I, I have been preparing a good topic for this. I'll be speaking on that day. False witness. Today you see, 
many Christian believers they give witnesses false false witnesses supporting one another giving false witnesses today Christians they don't want to speak the truth they don't want to stand for the truth they don't want to stand for the truth but they stand for lie they support one another with their false witnesses if they are wrong they never speak that they are wrong but they will support with one another there especially that happens when when uh, groupism take place a group in form of groups they will support one another even though it is wrong they will they will support they will for false witness another one is slander slander lying slander as i spoke in one of the topic lie is one of the greatest weapon of satan to make tempt to tempt a believer we are living our life in a lie so as a christian believers that should not be our life i have a lot to speak today but i'll not go further i i would like to say this is a tongue which cannot be controlled we can control we can we can tempt an animal but to tame a tongue is very very difficult as a christian believer of christ let us live a life a holy life a life which is acceptable to christ let us not live a life where a people thing evil let us not live a life where people hurt others let us not live a life where uh, we are not faithful to our uh, relationships where let us not live a life where we are we are not faithful to god before we uh, before we get married let us not indulge in all unnecessary thing all such thing which is not holy let us not become let us not become a false witness let us let us not be, live a life of lie but let us live a life a truthful life which is acceptable in the eyes of god let us try to control our tongue let us try to control our tongue my dear brothers and sisters god has given us many uh, verses many uh, uh, verses in the bible when you look at that it will help us how to control our tongue There are so many things we can find in the Bible. Let us ask wisdom from God, wisdom and knowledge from God, so that He will help us to to control our tongue. When we look at James chapter three, verse thirteen to eighteen, let me read out for everyone who is wise and understanding among you. Who is wise and understanding among you? show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom but if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart do not be boastful and false to the truth such wisdom does not come down from above but it is earthly and spiritual devilish for where there is envy and selfish ambition there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind but the wisdom from above is very first pure then peace, peaceable gentle willing to yield full of mercy and good fruits without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy and a harvest of righteousness in, is sown in peace for those who make peace let us not live a life of hypocrites hypocrites but let us live a, a pure life a truthful life which is acceptable to God as i said god has given us wisdom god has given us the word of god let us meditate day and night into the word of god and he will help us how to control our tongue and he will help us he will bless us and he let he will use our tongue as a blessing for others but not a curse for others when we look at this verse let us not live a life of uh, envy and a self ambition today many christians in the church they live a life of self ambition they think they live they want their uh, plans they want their thoughts to be fulfilled they want whatever they want 
they say is it should be done that is that is not the life of a christian my dear brothers and sisters in christ let us love one another let us listen to one another let us understand one another let us support one another let us happily say yes to one another let us when it is when it is from the bible when they are following the truth let us say yes instead of instead of be uh, arrogant to our decisions arrogant to take arrogant to others decision let us let us listen to them god has given us different uh, um, verses in the bible when we look at he has given us how to control our tongue he has helped us by giving us so many verses let us look at to psalms chapter psalms sorry psalms number 39 psalms number 39 verse 1 psalms number 39 verse 1 what does it written here i said i will guard my ways that i may not sin with my tongue i will keep a muzzle on my mouth as long as the wicked are in my presence be careful my dear brothers and sisters in christ try to control your tongue we might be among different uh, group of people L- let us speak wisely let us speak wisely that is what god is telling us let let this tongue be a blessing for others instead of a curse as i said when we look at proverbs chapter 12 verse 18 Pro- proverbs chapter 12 verse 18 what does it written here rash words are like short trust but the tongue of the wise brings healing as the christian believers is our tongue bring healings to others is there is it a blessing to others or a curse to others when you look at proverbs chapter 25 verse 15 proverbs 25 verse 15 what does it written here with patience a ruler may be persuaded and a soft tongue can bring bones if our tongue is soft as i said earlier in one of my sermon we can win souls for the kingdom of god if our tongue is soft we will never hurt people if our tongue is soft we can win many souls many hearts for the kingdom be wise be wise if we if your tongue is soft people will listen to you people will obey you if you if if you if you are following the true bible true god then why not people will follow you people will serve you people will listen to you so i would like to encourage with this let us control our tongue if we do not control our tongue this will this will um, take us to the end where we will be not able to return it is written in jeremiah chapter 9 verse 5 as a believer of Christ, let us control our tongue. Let us meditate day and night into the Word of God. Pray and whenever ask God to give wisdom and knowledge so that before we speak, we think a hundred times before we speak. So that our words will be blessing, not a curse for others, but it, is, it will be blessing for others. May God bless us all with this sharing. Thank you. Have a blessed day ahead. Amen.